Hey guys, we are back with another graphics card repair. This is a Radeon 9200 LE. It's more of a budget AGP video card. In my last uh, repair video, there was a Radeon 9550. Well, unfortunately, the card didn't work properly after doing the repair, replacing the caps. So one of the lessons was, well, start practicing with something cheaper. So here we go. This card works. I've been using it in a few projects actually, but one capacitor is bulging. We can see it here. I'll put it on the screen. It's one of the larger capacitors. And we've got another one that's showing a little bit of rust at the top. I try to improve with every video, reading your comments and learning from it. Today we have a few more gadgets and some small improvements. I bought a desoldering station. It's from Proskit, the SS331 desoldering station. And also I had some issues with the PCB preheater. It's a T8280. I had some issues with the mounting rods. They were a little bit flimsy. So I bought some clips uh, online to tighten down the board, uh, the video card a little bit. Yeah, it worked. And also I played around with the temperatures and we'll get to that. Let's take a closer look at the capacitors. So we have two larger capacitors. We can see they are labeled with G Luxon, 1000 microfarads and 10 volts. I tried to find out what series this is because that's really important with finding out the ESR. And you can kind of see it here in this photo. The series is LZ. Uh, later I confirmed that I'll put a better photo on the screen. So let's see if we can find a data sheet. I couldn't find a data sheet for G Luxon, but I found this document, some sort of a cross-reference document comparing capacitors from Jamicon, Tipo and G Luxon. So G Luxon is in the third column. Let's have a look. We're looking for LZ. There you go. Okay, LZ. So this is a low impedance, high ripple current capacitor. And the equivalent series in the other brands are SC. So let's do a search on that. Here we go. I found the data sheet. So let's have a look. We're looking for 10 volts and 1000 microfarads. The packaging, yeah, 8x15, uh, that makes sense. That measures pretty much what I can see on my board. And we have an impedance of 34 milliamps and around 1.4 amps of ripple current. Using a multimeter, I figured out that these two large capacitors are connected in parallel. That means the capacity doubles, the ripple current also doubles, and the impedance halves. So we basically have 2000 microfarads of capacitance and the ESI is half of 34, so that is 17. So I'm gonna replace these two electrolytic capacitors with a single polymer cap. I've had plenty of conversations with uh, ChatGPT about VRM controllers and what sort of capacitor you should go for. This is a high frequency circuit and there's a little bit of feedback also involved and ESR is what matters more than the capacity. So we're gonna go with 10 volts. Let's scroll down, 7.5, 10 volts, 1000 and we have an ESR of 14. So that's a little bit less than 17, uh, well within uh, the tolerances and 4.9 amps of ripple current. So much higher ripple current, very similar ESR. The capacity will be half, but that is not a big deal. Be aware that I'm using a single polymer cap. If we use two, remember they are connected in parallel and then the ESR will go from 14 to seven. So it will be way out of spec and that could cause some issues with the entire voltage regulation circuit. There are more capacitors on the video card, five of them. There are smaller, 100 microfarads, 16 volts. I couldn't find a data sheet. I had a chat with ChatGPT and it said that these are general purpose caps. A couple of them are involved in the voltage 
regulation for the memory, which is a much more low power environment compared to regulating the voltage for the GPU core. So again, I'm gonna do a polymod. Uh, these are the specifications here, 16 volts, 100 microfarads, the package size is five for the diameter, seven for the height, and we have an ESR of 50 milliohm and 320 milliamps of ripple current. So that will be much better than these electrolytic caps and it shouldn't cause any issues. And now we're gonna move to the desoldering process. So the first task is taking off the IO shield. And also I wanna uh, say a few more things about these capacitors. If anything I'm saying here is nonsense or you have a different opinion, please share your comment down below. This is how we all learn by sharing information. And I really enjoyed talking to uh, Chat GPT. I'm not gonna go back to school and become an electronics engineer, but yeah, I wanna learn and dig a little bit deeper than just blindly replacing all the caps with polymers. And my understanding is that you need to learn a little bit more about the purpose of these capacitors in the circuit. They're there for a reason. And especially in high load environments with voltage regulation going on with high frequencies, the ESR is very important. The preheater I bought, it's the T8280. So far, so good. I've only used it in one project before. Today I'm using slightly lower temperature. I'm gonna set it to 125 Celsius just to be sure. Previously I used 150. Those two numbers should be fine. I will invest some money into some thermal sensors. Uh, you are supposed to attach one to the bottom and one to the top of the PCB to see what the temperature is um, because the 125 that you a dial in in the preheater is not necessarily what you're gonna get at the top of the board. For the desoldering gun, because this video card is from the more modern area where they're using uh, lead-free solder, the melting point is a little bit higher. Also, we're dealing with a multi-layer board with fairly large ground planes whisking heat away, so it's all about heat. We wanna have enough coming from all directions basically. Uh, I'm setting the desoldering gun to 380 degrees. I'm also using the smallest tip. I believe it's a one millimeter sized one. And here we go. I've got footage with the microscope. While I'm desoldering, you can't really see what's going on because it's blocking the view. But once I uh, pull the, the uh, heat gun away, you can see uh, it's doing a fairly good job. So the first few are coming out really nicely. Some of the capacitors, they just drop down uh, into the preheater, which is actually a little bit of an issue. There are some small gaps and you have to then pry it out with some tweezers. My technique is resting the heat gun over the joint for a few seconds. Then I'm slowly wiggling it around just to feel that everything is loose. You can kind of tell that, okay, now the solder is all liquid, you can move around. Then I'm pulling the trigger, it's starting to suck in the solder. And I keep pressing the trigger while then removing the heat gun from the joint. And then I'll inspect the quality of the joint. And well, it worked well until I ran into one or two pins where despite having a PCB preheater and a desoldering gun, it still put up a fight. So maybe here the preheater is not set uh, high enough, but well, we have a hot air gun. So I set that one to 350 degrees. The uh, airflow is set to level five out of 20. And I really just pointed for a little bit and that's enough to tip the scale uh, in our favor. Now it's working. Everything is coming out quite easily. There are more tweaks that we could apply. Adding flux is a standard process that many of you recommend. But yeah, I wanna experiment with different methods and processes to get some experience under my belt. Uh, also adding fresh uh, leaded solder is another technique or even going with a low temperature solder. So these are all methods that I want to explore going forward on the channel. In the end, I got them all out quite easily. Half of them 
they just dropped down, which was very satisfying to see. Compared to how much I thought and struggled before, this is now really getting to the point that I wanted to achieve. I want to look forward to recapping parts. I don't want to dread it and uh, try to avoid it uh, and only do it if it's, if it's absolutely necessary. This should be a joyful process and uh, looking forward to working with these tools. So yeah, it seems that you are right. Yeah, you just have to invest a little bit in some basic tools to make the job easier. A few of the caps that didn't drop out, but they also didn't put up a fight. They easily pulled out. One cap required a little bit of wiggling, but again, compared to before, this is such a difference. So I got them all out. And now let's do some measuring and see what sort of, uh, in what a sort of condition these caps are. Let's go with the large ones, the 100 microfarad 12 volt caps. We're gonna measure the capacity first. Here's the one that's bulging, 525 microfarads according to the tweezers. So it lost half the capacity. The other one measures, well, even higher, that one, uh, either gained or it was higher out of the factory, 1,300 microfarads. So that's nice to see. Let's have a look at the ESR. The one that's bulging, 1.2 ohm. So that is definitely shot. Uh, uh, so it's a good thing we are replacing it. And the other one is measuring 30 milli ohms. So that is much, much better. So it seems that the uh, cap that's not bulging has been carrying the weight uh, because the other one is really gone. Let's measure these smaller capacitors, the ones that are 100 microfarads. The one with rust on top, well, it's still showing 90 microfarads, so that's all good. A quick look at the other ones. I saw readings from 70 microfarads to 87, so the capacity all checking out. In terms of ESR, I saw one cap 450 milliohm. That's the one with the rust on top. The other one's around 700 uh, milliohms. One was 1.3 ohms, so that is a little bit higher. So maybe that one is starting to fail. And that one was there was one with 950 milliohms. So yeah, these are perfectly fine. They're not exposed to high current and uh, high frequency, high demand workload like the capacitors responsible for the GPU core. So here we have a little bit of leeway and that's why a polymod should also be perfectly fine with these. Uh, I don't wanna say it doesn't really matter what you put in there, but uh, sort of it's true. Now I recommend that with the preheater you do the desoldering and the soldering in of the new caps in one process. I was a little bit impatient. That's just uh, my nature and the caps, the replacement caps haven't arrived yet. So I used the preheater two times. Uh, here you can see me inserting the caps into the video card. Everything is fine. Uh, I didn't have any issues, uh, blocked uh, pins or anything like that. I did forget that we're only using a single poly cap for the large capacitor. So I ended up pulling it out again. And yeah, let's solder them back in. Preheater again set to 125. The soldering station is set to 380. Here we are under the microscope. It seems to work well. The solder is melting just fine. It's flowing nicely. The joints are looking good. I really didn't have any issues. One little oopsie, I forgot to put in one cap, so I did that one without the preheater. Uh, I could tell the difference. The joints, the, f the, the, the flowing of the solder wasn't as easy as with the preheater, but I was able to get it on. For the equipment, I'm using a Fnersi soldering station. The soldering wire is for mechanic, and after all the soldering, I'm using the mechanic PCB cleaner to uh, make sure the board is clear of any flux. We are attaching the IO shield again and now it's ready to test. I put together an Athlon 64 test bench. We can hear the post beep. There's no image on the screen yet. So my heart was 
yeah, skipping a few beats, but yeah, it just took a little bit for the monitor to wake up from standby and here is the image. I ran a 3D Mark looping without VSync just to give it enough stress and it's looking good. It ran for half an hour uh, while I was doing something else, didn't crash. So yeah, it seems everything is working fine. So all in all, I think this was a success. I was much more confident than the last time. The last time, well, the first time you do anything, you know, uh, you don't know if you're gonna mess up. And well, I did, but look, that's part of the journey. So I was a lot more confident. I also had better equipment with the desoldering gun and with the 3D heat, we were able to get out those caps quite easily. So 3D heat was from the bottom with the PCB preheater from the top with the hot air gun and then also from the desoldering gun. So really quite amazing to see just how difficult it is to get these ground pins cleared out from the old solder. Couple of other methods I want to try in the future, which is yeah, applying more flux uh, like I did in the end and some fresh leaded solder as well as maybe trying low temperature solder. Uh, I've been told with the low temp solder, you have to make sure that you really uh, suck it all out before applying anything uh, new. And with the capacitors, I have to pay more attention to the ESI in the future. I'd love to hear from you guys what is your take on the whole capacitor uh, issue and what your experience is. I love learning and this is what the channel is all about. I'm also considering investing into an oscilloscope to see actually the ripple, do a before and after, and maybe a thermal camera. I've been told that when capacitors fail, the ESR slowly rises and then the temperature goes up. So in a situation where you've got a few caps that are good and others are not, well, yeah, if you can see visually, this one is bulging, that's easy, but what if not? Maybe on a thermal camera you can see, okay, this one cap is hotter than the other ones. It's on the way out, something like that. Uh, yeah, again, I'd love to hear what your strategies are. So all in all, I'm happy with the outcome of this project. A few little mistakes, but much better than the first one. And I'm eager to do my next recap and uh, yeah, breathe some new life into these old retro computer parts. In the video description, I put a list of all the gear that I'm using in this video. And if there's anything you want to buy, consider supporting the channel by clicking on one of those affiliate links to Amazon, AliExpress, eBay, and so on, and buying it through there. It doesn't cost you anything and it does help me out buying new gear, leveling up and creating more interesting content. So thank you for everyone that subscribed. Thank you for everyone that's watching and I'm look, looking forward to seeing you again very soon with another video.